Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he, he, a. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. I just kicked the chalkboard right here. Welcome back to Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar and I hope the autofocus didn't jump in, you filthy boy. Okay, Zoomer. <laughs> you got it because autofocus likes zooming in. Never mind. We are going to do some epsilon delta stuff today. We want to show that f of x being equal to x plus cosine of x is uniformly continuous on the whole of R. That's the first on this channel and it has been requested by one of the family members. Check out the join button. You can support the channel by becoming a member of the channel. Also a huge shout out to my first something like $5 member Hans Kim. Thank you for supporting the channel. You are a great support to the channel. Also my Christmas merch just arrived. Okay, just recently. It's hella Gucci. It turned out really good. Print quality is fucking nice. 10 to 15 percent of everything code down there in the description link in my shop we are going to dive right in what does it mean for a function to be uniformly continuous i'm going to write the epsilon delta definition out and then we are going to see where this is going to lead epsilon delta definition of uniform continuity is for all epsilon created in zero there does exist some delta being created in zero such that for all x and y out of our domain, okay, a subset of our domain, three numbers, I'm, I'm going to put it like this, for now it holds that the absolute value of x minus y is less than delta, thus imply that the distance between f of x and f of y is less than epsilon. If we are dealing just with functions, you can use a metric definition, but we are dealing on the real numbers, so we are just going to use the definition for Euclidean space, where the metric is being defined by, you, by the Euclidean metric. What this right here basically means is that we can bring f of x and f of y arbitrarily close to each other simply under the condition that x and y are already arbitrarily close to each other. This is what uniform continuity means, and it's a extra spicy form of continuity. Now for epsilon delta proofs it would be nice to find out some epsilon and some delta at first, okay? Some simple definitions and then we are going to write out the proof one after another. So we are going to do some playing around. At first let us see what our delta actually is, okay? Let us gather a bit of stuff and then we are going to backwards engineer everything. So we are going to let the distance between x and y be less than delta. Well, we want to get to the point where we can express our delta simply with respect to epsilon, okay? This is what you always want to do. Now, let us take a look at our epsilon right here, or rather at f of x minus f of y, the distance between those two. Well, we are going to write this out at first. That's the distance between x plus the cosine of x And the same thing, just with negative sign and with y. Okay, negative y, so simply plugging a y into here. I hope you can see where this does come from. Minus the cosine of y. And now what you would like to always do is find some upper bounds, etc., and do some triangle inequality shit. It's how it always goes. It's, it's actually quite simple, but it's a lot of fun doing this once in a while. So at first, let us group stuff together. x and negative y would be less than delta, that's already good. And also cosine of x minus cosine of y, that's something, okay? Let us write a bit of stuff together and then let's see where this is going to lead. Okay, absolute value of, I'm going to put this in parentheses, x minus y and then plus parentheses cosine of x minus the cosine of y. And thus, by the triangle inequality, we know that this is less or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between the cosine of x and the cosine of y. Okay, just simple triangle inequality. It's, it takes longer to do um, detours than go directly. Okay, to, to somewhere it just makes sense. It's a triangle inequality if you define yourself a metric. So cosine of y just as some explanation stuff right here. Okay, one cool thing you might notice is that the distance between x and y is actually less than delta. So the first part is already done, but what about cosine of x minus cosine of y, the distance between those two? Let us do some Spielerei, okay? Let us spiel around a little bit 
as the German boys might want to say, okay, you, here's a quote from a while back, you have to play around with the expressions like you would play around with your girlfriend at home. Okay, Papa Flemmy 2018, good old times, or 2017, I can't remember. So let us find an estimate for our distance between the cosine waves. Now, at first I want you guys to notice something, and this is Papa's way, you know, I like integrals. We are going to rewrite this, okay? This looks like the integral of something, the definite integral. Namely, what is going to give us integrated the cosine? Well, that's going to be the sine in this case, okay? Absolute value of the integral from, okay, lower bound, upper bound, x to y of the sine of y. Um, sine of t, let's put it like this. It really doesn't quite matter what we call the argument in here. Now, we got this right here. Okay, so um, sine integrated is negative cosine in the normal case, but you get rid of negative by this absolute value. Now I want you guys to notice that the absolute value of x, for example, is the same as the absolute value of the absolute value of x, okay? Let us put absolute values right here for reasons that will become apparent in a minute. Now, there is also triangle inequality for integrals, namely that the absolute value of an integral is less or equal than the integral of the absolute value of the function, okay? This is just something that holds, you can easily verify this by, yeah, simple absolute value properties. It's, it's, it's really easy to verify. Sine of t, integrate with respect to t. Now, we can move on. Let us find an estimate for the sine right here. Our sine, you might know, is always bounded between, in the rears, negative one and one. Meaning that's equivalent to saying that the absolute value of sine is actually less or equal to one, okay? You know this notation from, for example, the geometric series. Meaning we can find another estimate, namely that this is less or equal to the absolute value of the integral from x to y of, well, one, okay? Simply integrating one, leaves us with this. And now, well, integrating this is going to leave us with t, value it from x to y, meaning it's going to leave us with um, just the absolute value of x minus y. Yes, <laughs> it's as easy as it is, okay? Now, we can move on. This is x minus y, and we know what x minus y actually is. This is less than delta. Meaning we have found an estimate, namely that this thing is strictly less than delta. You can also deal with this by using the addition formula for cosine waves. Okay, I have derived it for the sine waves, but not for the cosine waves. It's a pretty easy thing. You can basically use the same estimates then. Meaning, this thing is also less than delta, and overall, f of x minus f of y, their distance is strictly less than two delta. Now, we are going to choose our epsilon nicely. We are going to choose it really nicely, namely that our epsilon is nothing other than two times delta in the proof, or because we want to get it to the point where this whole thing is less than epsilon, we are going to choose delta to be equal to epsilon over two. Now we are going to formulate our proof for the uniform continuity of this function on the whole of the real numbers. Now, that's the proof, okay? This is the proof part. <laughs> Let epsilon be strictly greater than zero. This is the first step, okay? This is the first step of our definition that we actually need to use. And we are going to choose ourselves some arbitrary delta, okay? For each epsilon there does exist some delta. Let us choose one, namely delta being equal to epsilon over two. Now we are going to suppose that our x and y are, okay? So it has to hold for all x and y out of the subset of the domain, it's the real numbers in this case. Suppose x and y are element of the reals. And we want to have, we are just going through the definition, x minus y, their distance, to be less than delta. Now, for the last part of our definition for uniform continuity, it's going to be that this implies that the distance between those two functions evaluated at the point is less than epsilon. Meaning, 
this implies that the absolute value of f of x minus f of y is thus, okay, we had this before, x plus the cosine of x minus y minus the cosine of y. And now all of our calculations actually come in is actually, okay, now we have that this is strictly less than two delta, but we have chosen delta to be exactly epsilon over two, meaning this is two times epsilon over two is thus equal to epsilon. And now we are done, okay? This completes our proof. This function is uniformly continuous on the whole of the real numbers as our domain. It's just what it is. And it does make perfect sense because polynomials like x are actually, so simple polynomials like x or x in itself is uniformly continuous. Also the cosine of x is uniformly continuous and the whole of r, meaning the sum of uniformly continuous functions is also uniformly continuous. That was a bit of work for me also because um, I've never done a video like this before and it's quite new to me to do epsilon delta proofs. But I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, my comment channel if you like, buy those Christmas merch. It's absolutely nice. Look at the print quality. You can actually see all the numbers of our boy golden ratio. And well, up until the next video, have flamble day. Ciao. Love you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs>